By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And also, welcome back to our Highlander 9394 online event. I have reached it all the way into the top 16. And in today's episode, we are going to watch me playing in the top 16. I'm taking on Elon and he's got a deck called Top Deck Answers. Now that's pretty intimidating. It's red, green and white and he is taking on my deck, Welcome to the Ether, a red and green deck built around Tuknir, the legendary creature that maybe you know or maybe you don't. If you check out the deck deck, you'll definitely know who he is after checking that out. Talking about that, before we jump into the deck decks, it might be uh, wise to kind of quickly talk about 9394 Highlander. So this is a format based on Canadian Highlander. It's a 100 card singleton format. Uh, but of course, because it's old school, we only allow the old school sets. You can see them here on the slide on the left top corner. A uh, cool thing to note is that you are allowed to play with those Harper's Bazaar um, cards. For example, you can play with Arena in this uh, in your list, you know, in this in this way of playing Highlander. And also, uh, you can spend 10 points in total on cards that have points on them. And you can also see how we kind of divided those points here on this list. Now, this is all brand new. So this whole tournament was kind of an experiment as well. We started with 46 Wizards and now only um, 16 of those Wizards remain. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. And then, of course, after this match, we will reach, uh, we will show you the, the top eight. So hopefully I will be in there. I will be in the quarterfinals, but we we don't know. I first have to play against Elon and his deck is uh, is looking pretty good. So it's a pretty nice list. Before uh, I start with the deck decks, one last thing I want to share with you. And that is that you can also choose to skip this. I know some people prefer to first go to the match and then check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the timestamps in the description of the video. You will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps is MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find the Timmy Talks Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts with just $1. Okay, now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Elon. Top deck answers. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Elon. Top deck answers. And uh, yeah. I'm a fan, you know, you have me with the Elder Dragon. That's that's when you have me. It's beautiful to see the Elder Dragon in here. So it's uh, it's white, it's green, it's red. And uh, it, it's a cool list, you know. There's a lot of like oddball cards in here that, that might work in, in Singleton quite well. You know, a card like Aladdin, card you don't see often. But I mean, it steals artifacts. It is super cool. And and it could, you know, do some, do some damage here. Uh, you know, a card like Mountain Yeti, who could be quite good. Remember, I think in Singleton in general, creatures... Are pretty good because you simply have less removal. You've got a hundred card deck, right? So it means your creatures are better. And this is a creature that has protection from a color, you know, protection from white, meaning if your opponent plays white, they always play with the white removal. They cannot use the swords against uh, against this bad boy. Now it also has that beautiful Sheevan. That's kind of the creature base here. Then when we're looking at the other cards, we see a lot of like silver bullets, you know, things that can really change a game around. Perhaps that's why the deck is called Top Deck Answers. We see Mirror Universe, for example, you know, if you're if you're behind, that's a card that can get you back into it. We see balance there in the white slot. Uh, we also see a, a city in a bottle, which is a card I didn't really expect to see that much. So again, a silver bullet. He is, of course, not playing with black, so he doesn't have access to Demonic Tutor. So it's really kind of like gambling with a 100-card deck that you will find that one silver bullet, of course, in, in your list. But I, I'm kind of liking it. We also see... Uh, oh, we see a Eureka in here now. That is sweet. I would love to see that Eureka in action. That is so much fun. I think that's really cool. You know, I can I can imagine Eureka is really a card. You know, when you, you we all know the Eureka decks, right? Um, but the thing is, if you only have one Eureka, you're thinking, how can I use this? Like, how could this be good? It's maybe that's not a good question. Maybe the question should be, is this fun? If the answer is yes, play it. You know, and definitely in a hundred card deck. Uh, you know, this could turn the game upside down. So again, one of those top deck answers, I guess. We also see a Titania song, which I think is really cool. Uh, one green and three, an enchantment from Antiquities that basically makes all non-creature artifacts into artifact uh, artifact creatures with power and toughness equal to their casting cost and they lose all their abilities. So for example, your Nevenerals disc has a, a casting cost of four. So it just turns into a 4-4 four, four vanilla creature, artifact creature that is. But um, it's really cool. And it also... Um, takes care of any scary artifacts that your opponent may have. 
And I also like this combination between Aladdin and Titania's song, right? You can start stealing creatures from your opponent now because all their non-artifacts have now become artifact creatures, which is pretty sweet. And also a nice thing to note about Titania's song, if you, for example, disenchant this card, the effect lasts until the end of that turn. So it's not like it gets destroyed and all the artifacts instantly turn back to themselves, to your old non-creature artifact state. No, they stay creatures until the end of that turn. You know, that's that's some of the thing, things that I really uh, like here. We also see a Tsunami talking about Silver Bullets. That's pretty good. Um, we see an Inferno as well on the side here of, of Elon. So, I mean, overall, I mean, I I Elon's deck is it's full of scary cards. Scary cards that can, can turn the game completely, you know? And of course, I'm not surprised to see another deck that plays red here so high up in the tournament because I think what, what makes red so strong are, of course, those red burn spells, right? They've been so decisive in, in my matches as well. You know, you're kind of, you've got your opponent on eight, you're kind of stuck. Uh, you know, the whole board's cluttered with all sorts of small creatures. There's no real way to go. And then, boom, you top deck that X spell. You've got a lot of mana. And, you know, it seals the deal. You win the game. And it, it has happened to me winning it, but also losing it. And again, I'm not surprised to see Elon also playing with all those X spells. Also in green, by the way, having the Hurricane, but also the Fireball, Disintegrate, Earthquake. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm doing exactly the same, Elon. And it actually makes sense. Anyway, this is the deck of Elon. I'm loving some of the cards in here. I think that there are a lot of scary silver bullets. Top deck answer is a good title for this deck. Now let's take a look at my list. And here we see my deck, Welcome to the Ether, and that is a reference to Tuknir Deathlock, a card that's also in this deck. Actually, the deck is built around Tuknir. Uh, my idea of, of making the deck started with this card. So this is a 2-2 flyer, a legendary creature, and it's actually an explorer of the ether if you read the flavor text. And what I really like about this is that it has like a mini giant growth on there, right? I can pay a green, a red, and a tap, and then target creature gains plus two, plus two until end of turn. So I think that's quite sweet. There are a few tricks in the deck with the, the Tuknir. For example, Dwarven Warriors, I can make a creature unblockable, then pump it later with the Tuknir. Or um, I also have, for example, Tracker in the deck, so I can make it a 4-4, and then it can kill out a bigger creature. But I mean, above all, I think, you know, a 2-2 flyer that can pump another creature could be useful in this deck. When we're looking uh, at the strategy of this deck, by the way, it's really your red-green strategy, right? So it is an aggro deck uh, that wants to just wants to have the perfect curve. The first three, four turns, all I really want to do is play a creature and turn a creature sideways. Play a creature, turn a creature sideways, right? I really try to swarm my opponent by playing out all my creatures. And if the game takes longer than expected, I can always win it with an X spell, right? I'm playing Fireball, Disintegrate, Dwarven Catapult, Earthquake. Uh, I'm playing with, uh, with Hurricane. I'm playing with Detonate. So th the first goal is to start of the game, I'm going to try to deploy my creatures, like I said deal some damage, and then finish it off with direct damage. Now, if that plan doesn't work, I do have a few, like, bigger creatures in the deck, a bit more controlling creatures, like a Cockatrice, like a Thicket Basilisk, uh, also the Killer Beast, which is a gr great way to sink my mana in. I'm also playing with a Two-Headed Giant, so it's not all small stuff. I'm also playing with some bigger creatures, so that later in the game, I also have a chance to kind of to kind of win and it, it's not an, an auto loss if the game takes a little bit longer. Uh, another card I really like talking about the long game is a Thelonite Druid, which is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green and 2 from Fallen Empires. And I can tap the Druid, sacrifice a creature, and then all my forests turn into 2-3 creatures, which I think is kind of cool. I think this is one of the, the stronger cards that you don't see that often, but it can really win you the game uh, out of nowhere. Now, um, maybe it's also good to kind of mention how I spent my points, so you can spend 10 points on the um, cards with points on them. And I've chosen to go for uh, Mox Emerald, Mox Ruby, and Soul Ring. So I really went for the Mana Ramp. The decision, um, I, I did that because I just want to go really quickly. I want to be able to just play everything out. And also I, I figured out that looking at the amount of X spells I have in my deck, the Soul Ring could be really, really good later in the game because yeah, it just adds those two points of damage to your Disintegrate or your Fireball or whatever X spell you're playing. So. I think it's kind of good. It was a tough choice, though, because I think that, for example, a Library of Alexandria would have been quite good in here. And there are, there are some other choices that I could have made, but I really chose to go with uh, the uh, the mana ramping uh, kind of plan. So I thought, you know, let's just go for the two mocks and, uh, and the soul ring. Anyway, this is uh, the deck that I'm playing with today. We talked about the deck of my opponent, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the match.
Game number one, here we go. So we have Elon on the left with his top deck answers deck, red, white, and green. And I'm sitting on the right playing my red, green, Tuknir deck. This is a pretty good opener for me here. A Birds of Paradise turn one. Hopefully I can ramp into some big creature next turn. That will be really sweet. Perhaps a Spitting Slug, for example. Three mana, two, four. But let's first see what Elon can do. Maybe he's gonna bolt the bird. He is playing with bolt and with red. There we already see the mountain. Tapping the mountain, okay. Okay, not a burn spell though, but this is actually worse, I think. Soul Ring, really good opener for Elon here. And a six in hand passing the turn. Tapping the birds. Untapping the birds. Okay, let's see what I'm gonna do. Perhaps first uh, have a land drop, I hope. Or did I keep uh, uh, one land and birds of paradise hand? There's a Shatter, okay, so answering that Soul Ring very quickly, so that's good. Passing the turn, so no land drop here. So did I keep a hand with just the Birds of Paradise and a Forest? That is ballsy. There is a green from Elon and a pass. Okay, I'm feeling lucky here that there's no removal on the Birds of Paradise. Tapping a green, okay, there's a Soul Ring. Tapping the Birds, tapping the Soul Ring. Going for an oi, 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 an often troll 2-2, two, two, one red to regenerate. Of course, I don't have red mana open at the moment. And I'm kind of starting to understand why I kept the hand. Probably had Soaring, Birds of Paradise, and Forest, uh, which of course is not great. But I mean, if your opponent cannot get rid of the Soaring and the Birds, you have a really good mana base and you can really start playing out a lot of bigger threats, which is what my deck wants to do. Anyway, Elon's turn now. Let's see if he has an answer. For example, a land and it may be a fireball on the often troll. He is playing with all those X spells. Earthquake, Disintegrate, Fireball, also playing Hurricane. Looks like he's really in the tank here. Trying to think what the best line of play is. Maybe he's thinking about, am I going to destroy the often troll or the Birds of Paradise? Playing a white, now he's got all three colors there, that's something. I mean, it is pretty, like, risky to play three colors in this Highlander format. Most decks have just two colors, and there are also a lot of mono decks. Oh, look at that, an Earthquake for two. Okay, killing the uh, Often Troll, also dealing two damage to himself. And, of course, losing a powerful card. But, of course, I mean, Elon also knows, okay, now there's no red open. Now I can kill the Troll. The Often Troll, it's, it's going to be so hard to deal with later in the game if I have red open. So it's understandable. And of course, now this turn, he doesn't take any damage. Let's see what I can do. Tapping the birds, tapping four in total. There's a white Lily wolf, a 1-1. One, one, and there's another one, timber wolf. So this is wolf tribal. That is pretty cool. And I'm dropping here to 17, taking a, a point of mana burn. Because of course, I'm uh, tapping one mana too many. So the Waluli Wolf can pump another creature. Can, well, can give any creature plus one, plus one. It can also pump itself. Pretty sweet. So hopefully I can start uh, dealing some combat damage next turn. Let's first see what Elon can do. Of course, if he has a land drop, he'll have four mana. So I'm, for, I'm sure there's going to be some kind of creature. And, uh, you know, these two creatures, they're nice, but they're not really big. So if Elon can just play like a giant spider, for example, you know, he can, he can just block... For days, basically. I'm really lucky here that Elon cannot do anything. I wonder what's in his hand. Perhaps really big creatures. There's a Pendlehaven. Great draw. One of the things I could do is, uh, is pump my Timberwolves here to a 2-3. And then also pump it with the Wolf to make it a 3-4. So we're going to make it a 2-3. Going to attack. Let's see if Elon's going to do anything. Doing nothing. And then I'm going to pump it up. So three points of damage here for Elon. Dropping to 15. Now we're talking, and let's see if I can put some more pressure on the board. Tapping four, okay. What are we gonna do? There's a Killer Bees, again taking a damage, but I mean, this Killer Bees could be really, really good. Oh, one flying creature, originally from uh, Legends. One green to give it plus one, plus one. And this card was so popular back in the day. Everybody wanted to have a Killer Bees. You don't see it that often anymore nowadays, but um, I still think it's a super cool card. There's another force being played by Elon, so he's got five lands now. I mean, he should play something, or is he just going to pass turn, and is he going to play a Sheevan Dragon, you know, when he drops land number six? Looks like he is going to do something here. Tapping. Tapping four. What are we going to see for four? 
Oh, wow, yeah. What's the name of this creature again? It's a 2-2 creature, and you can tap it to prevent two points of damage. Oh, man, it's... Uh, oh, I forgot the name, but I'm going to look it up after this match. Really cool to see Elon playing with it. So it is a 2-2 body. It doesn't fly. And again, you can tap it to prevent two points of damage. I believe you also have to pay something. But I'm not quite sure. Let's just see what happens, what he does when I attack. So pumping the wolf here to a 2-3, pumping it to a 3-4, dealing three points of damage. And of course, I can pump the killer bees here. Wow, this is six damage for Elon. That is brutal. Six points of damage. What can he do? It looks like he, there's nothing that he can do. I mean, he could have put his 2-2 two -two in front, but I mean, yeah. You want to use that ability, I guess, next turn to start preventing some damage coming in. Untapping everything here. It's not looking great for Elon. He, he, I guess he just couldn't find the right cards. You know, sometimes your deck does that to you that you get the really high casting cost cards first. And then, of course, my deck is quite good in putting that early pressure on. I think that Shatter on the, on the Soaring was quite important. But, of course, I'm not there yet. Elon is still on 9. And, you know, what if he just finds exactly land 6 and plays a Sheevan Dragon? I mean, then I have a huge problem. It's still early days. There's a pass, though. Could he have Inferno? I'm now thinking. Like, Inferno, perhaps that card uh, could be a way out for Elon. But, of course, Inferno also deals... Six damage to him. Anyway, attacking here with everything, it seems. Let's see what Elon can do. Tapping a red. Tapping a green. Oh, no. Tapping two white and a red. Oh, sweet. This is so nice. This card, man. Absolutely epic. So what happens now is he can take over one of my creatures and it untaps and he can then, of course, block with it if he wants to, which he probably wants to. Um, oh, man, this is so difficult. And then um, I get it back at the end of the turn. But yeah, this is really difficult. So I guess he's going to steal the killer bees. Yeah, that makes sense. He's going to take the killer bees. Oh, man. And now the question is, what am I going to do with it? You know, I mean, he's probably going to block one of the two wolves. Let's first see what he's going to do with the 2-2. Two -two. So he's going to block the timber wolves with the 2-2. Two -two. So I can pump it up to a 2-3. I wonder what I'm going to do here. It looks like I've got some options. So I'm going to make this into a 2-3. Am I going to let D.Y. Lily die? I mean, Elon has two forests, so he can kill it. And now he's going to block and he's going to tap. So probably going to prevent the damage that it's taking so that it doesn't die. So it's going to live. I believe it can prevent two points of damage. So that means it doesn't die, but also the Timberwolf doesn't die because it's got three toughness. So it's a 2-3 being blocked by a 2-2. Two -two. And now I guess I'm really in the tank to think, okay, what do I want to do? Because I know that Elon can pump the Killer Bees. Or he doesn't because he wants the Killer Bees to die. That's exactly what happens here. So the Killer Bees dies. One of the things that I could have done is when he played the card to take over the Killer Bees, I could have pumped uh, the Killer Bees here. But I chose not to. I think that would have been a better line of play. I mean, it's easy looking back now, but I think what I should have done is make the Killer Bees at least a 1-2. You know, then my Wooly Wolf would have died, but my Killer Bees remain on the board. I mean, Bees is such a strong creature here. And it, this is such a good turn for Elon because he hasn't taken any damage. He's destroyed my most powerful creature. So, I mean, this is, this is great for him. Two cards in hand. It looks like I'm passing the turn, doing nothing in my second main. I mean... This could be the moment where the game turns around or not because now Elon is just drawing a card passing turn. So, I mean, this was a moment for Elon now to kind of play a big, a big creature, kind of to, to change, the, change the game around. Perhaps he's really land flooded. That could be the case, of course. So he's giving me more time, attacking with both now. Now, remember, I've got that Pendlehaven. 
to save whatever creature is going to block. And then at least I deal one point of damage. Although one point of damage is not a lot. Ooh, look at Elon there getting... Looking at the cards in hand again. That is scary, man. What is he going to do? So it looks like he's going to block. And I'm going to pump that creature that he's blocking to save it. And of course, he can again tap the 2-2 two -two to prevent the damage that he's going to get. And that means only one point of damage from the Timberwolves coming in. Putting Elon on 8, I believe. Or am I going to play a Giant Grove? No, yeah, I am going to play a Giant Grove to kill the 2-2. Two -two. Remember, it only prevents 2 points of damage. So this should be enough to kill that 2-2. Two -two. Or does Elon have a response? Nope, he does not. Okay, so the 2-2 two -two dies. And he takes 1 point of damage. going to drop to 8. And I mean, another line of play could have been to kind of keep the Giant Grove. Okay, there's a Thicket Basilisk. So being able to put more pressure on the board, I think, is really important. And for Elon, actually, that one-off Inferno would be great right now. Yes, that would put him on 2, which is not ideal. But it would deal with all the creatures I've got on board. Oh, is he doing it? Oh, he's doing it. Oh, ho, 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 sweet. Oh, God. I was just saying it, like, expecting him not to have it. But uh, look at that killing four of my creatures. I mean, again, the big problem for Elon here is that he's on two, but I, I feel like he had to do this. If he waited longer, he would have been below six. He would have killed himself with his Inferno. I think this is this is fantastic uh, play by Elon. I love it, man. And I mean, it kind of shows the power of his deck, top deck answers. And yes, he's on two, but if you can just find a big creature here, start swinging in, who knows? Okay, there's an Icy. It's a good card. You know, it can take out another creature threat if I find it. It can also tap down the uh, the Pendlehaven. I guess he's now going to tap... Oh, yeah, tap the Mountain. I now realize I only have one red source. That's pretty sweet. Okay, finding a City of Brass. I'm lucky here. Although, with that City, Elon can keep tapping the City down to keep pinging me. It looks like I'm taking it back as well. Realizing I shouldn't play it out yet. Passing the turn. So two cards in hand for me. One of them is the City of Brass. So that's not really that useful. So this is good information for Elon, right? Drawing card number three. Tapping the mountain again. As one does. Let's see what I find. Okay, playing the City of Brass probably means I have a play. Gonna go to nine. Gonna tap. Okay, there's an Iron Claw Orc. Two, two. Cannot be assigned to block any creatures with power greater than 1. They're not very courageous, these creatures, but they'll do the job. It's a 2-2. Of course, Elon can tap it down, so not there yet, but um, one step closer, you could say. And I mean, I'm on 9. I'm not that high on my life total either, so it's not like I'm complete. I have, I have so much life left still, you know? There is a mountain. Eight mana now for Elon. He's drawing so much lands uh, in this uh, in this first game. Drawing another card for turn. Two cards in hand then. Let's see what I can do. Probably first want to go into a combat to see if Elon taps down the Iron Claw, which I'm sure he will. Exactly. Tapping down the Iron Claw Orcs. And I'm on nine, putting my hand away. It looks like I'm just passing the turn. Okay, so... Uh, both of us still kind of in top decking mode, trying to find that game changer card here in game number one of the first top 16 match of the 93-94 Highlander Online Tournament. I mean, this is excitement. Tapping a green. Okay, script sprites, a 1-1. One, one. I mean, this is so funny. Okay, of course, I can make it a 2-3 with the Pendlehaven. So actually, this is also a win. So now Elon has to find an answer for the script sprites. Tapping down, of course, my Iron Claw Orcs. And passing the turn here back to Elon. He's going to untap. He needs to find an answer. I mean, a creature a creature would suffice. Doesn't have to be flying because he can tap down my flyer then. And the ground creature could block the Iron Claw Orcs. I still have that kind of Sheevan Dragon in the back of my mind. What if he top decks a Sheevan? What then, you know? I mean, that would be a huge problem for me. 
Elon really in the tank here. So I don't think that he's drawn a, a Shivan or else he would have slammed it on the board straight away. We have to wait and see here. If I can win this game, I'm already halfway into the quarterfinals of the Highlander tournament. He's going to tap the planes here. What is he going to do? I mean, one blocker would be enough. He's really keeping us in suspense here. Ooh, there is a Spirit Link, but actually Spirit Link is not going to work because you first take the damage and then you gain the life. So before you can have the life, you're already dead. And uh, I'm sure that we're going through that right now. We're discussing that together, that that's the case. It is really different than Life Link. And uh, that's the difference in this case between, you know, staying alive and dying. So we'll just have to kind of wait. Maybe Elon has another answer. But of course, I don't think he has a, a creature or else he would have played it already. So he does have the IC for one of the two creatures. So he could, for example, tap down the Iron Claw Orc. The problem then is that I can uh, attack with the script sprites and of course pump the script, script sprites to a 2-3 with my Pendlehaven and he's only on 2 life. Yeah, here we see Elon, I think, taking the card back. Or not. Maybe it's just his only option and that means that uh, it will be game here. So we'll just have to wait and see. What are you going to do, Elon? Can you find a way out of this? So taking back the spirit link, untapping. What is he going to do? I mean, he's not picking up the cards yet, so maybe he's got some kind of trick here. I mean, that Inferno play earlier was, was already beautiful, you know. And you know you could you could say that perhaps that was a mistake of mine over committing to the board putting that thicket knowing you know I'm playing against white so I can expect uh, you know a raff or a balance um, and of course playing against red I, I I can expect well we already saw the earthquake so I guess Elon has nothing else to do or recasting the spirit link. So putting the counter on there, showing that it has a spirit link. That's all that he does, though. I wonder what his plan is here. Maybe he doesn't have a plan. Maybe he's simply just going to die now and, and he's going to let me work for it. That could be the case. So he's going to tap down the Iron Claw, probably. So I'm going to attack and I'm going to pump it to a 2-3. Is this game number one? That is the big question. He is going to tap something. Oh, look at that. A divine offering here. Destroying his own icy manipulator. Of course, to get to six, then he takes two, then he gets uh, the two back from the spirit link, so he stays on six. Wow. Destroying his own icy manipulator, but he has to, to kind of stay alive. So obviously, this is not great for Elon. Then again, I mean, he managed to survive one more turn. You know, and if you have one more turn and you're now on six, so you can take another hit from the team here. Wow. Okay, there's a preacher. Oh, God, is Elon actually going to get back into this? Wow. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. All of a sudden, it looks like the table's kind of turned. Okay, here's a fisher, though. So that Fisher probably wasn't my hand for a long time. Oh, look at this. And avoid fate. Oh, 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 I love it, man. I like this. I have to be honest. I'm not a big fan of avoid fate because whenever I have it in my hand, I can never do anything with it. But I love to see someone using it. And uh, this is this is majestic, Elon. This is majestic. Anyway, putting you now on four with the Iron Claw Orcs. But this is a problem, you know, like... Oh, he can now take over one of my creatures. I guess I have to give him the Iron Claw Orcs. 
right? Because if I give him the, the, the script sprites, he's going to gain life. I don't want that to happen. Oh, man. Oh, this is so bad. Remember, I'm on four. Uh, nine, I mean. He's on four. I'm on nine. Oh, am I actually going to still lose this somehow? Oh, he's going to play something as well. Oh, there's an Aladdin. Okay, not too useful at the moment. Oh, of course, it can steal the soul ring, though, which is kind of funny. So Aladdin can, can steal artifacts. Very flavorful, of course. Now we see Elon using the preacher. So I have to choose a creature. He's doing it in my upkeep to give to Elon. Now, the problem is if I give him the script sprites, he's going to only deal one damage to me a turn. But he is also going to gain a life. So I really don't want him to kind of walk away with the game that way. Uh, but it's only one power. If I give him the Iron Claw Orcs, it's a 2-2, two -two, and he can deal two damage to me every single turn. So I would drop to seven, to five, to, you know, it's I'm on a five-turn clock. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really bad either way. It's kind of a catch-22. I think looking at it now, and I, I honestly don't remember what I picked, but I think reasoning now, I think it's probably better to give the Iron Claw Orc. Um, although you could also say that there's a chance that I draw into an X spell and then it doesn't matter if he's got some more life. But I mean, this is, this is what an exciting, interesting game one this is. Like I, to be honest, Elon, I thought that moment I played the Thicket Basilisk that, that you were done for, but that, that Inferno really got you back. And with the Icy, you managed to kind of stole the game. And also when you played the Divine Offering, I thought, okay, I mean, if you have to Divine Offering your own artifact, there's no way... You can win this still, but man, after that, you played the Preacher, and now we're here. We're Now we're in this situation where I'm like, well, it's actually looking pretty good for you. You're out of bolt range as well, being on four, so that's decent. I'm really taking my time here, by the way, to decide what to do. Like, giving him the script sprites. Okay, okay. Wow. Drawing my card for turn. It's a forest. Uh, that's always the case, right? When you're in top decking mode, you find Lance. Passing the turn. Oh, my God. Is Elon really going to win this? So it keeps the preacher tapped, of course. He can attack now with the sprites. Put me on eight. Gain a life himself. Go up to five. Oh, man. And it's, it's so sweet to see that, that Elon is using the spirit link so nicely. I mean, it's so cool the way he's using it. Oh, man. He's reading the Aladdin at the moment. I think he can steal the Soul Ring. Exactly. I mean, why not, right? The Leaf's got to tap the Aladdin, right? I'm, I'm not sure. I do know you can use it multiple times. So you, you, you tap it to steal it. Um, but then you can also untap it again. You, you, you keep the artifact until the Aladdin dies. You don't have to keep the artifact tapped, like, for example, the Preacher. But you do tap it to activate it. That means I can at least swing in with the Iron Claw Orcs. I can put him on three. I think that would be really nice here to put him on three with the Orc. There is, of course, the problem then that he could attack next turn also with the Aladdin. Uh, which I guess every point counts here, but that also goes for Elon. So look at that passing the turn. So not attacking with the Iron Claw Orc. I mean, I get it. I don't want to take the extra damage from the Aladdin, but I think I should have attacked her just at the little window, putting him on three. Of course, he goes back up to four, but I think I'm just really just hoping to draw into an X spell here. But remember, it's Singleton. And I mean, that. look at my deck. It's still pretty big, you know. Lots of cards in there. Anyway, Elon's turn first. Attacking here with the sprites. Putting me on seven. He's on six. Look at that. He's almost higher than me now. Oh, man. There's more creatures, of course, scavenger folk. Yeah, tapping on my deck, really hoping to find something here. Am I going to lose the first game here in the top 16 after I thought it was a sure win? Insanity, you know. Maybe this is why these formats are so much fun. They're so swingy, you know, these singleton formats. So Elon on six, I'm on seven. He's got the script sprites. He's going to... He's gonna, Put me down to six, and he will go up to seven. I mean, would it have been better to give him the Iron Claw Orcs? I don't know, because maybe I would have died already. Okay, there is a um, Concordant Crossroads. 
That means I can attack straight away. I'm going to attack with both here. Do I have some kind of pump spell? Of course, I've got the Pendle Haven. So I've got a 2-3 and a 2-2 two, two into the red zone. Let's see what Elon's going to do here. I mean, it is risky for him. If he takes the damage and if I have, for example, a Bloodlust, I win the game, right? So then again, he can also reason and say, you know what? I'm going to take four, go down to two, and then on the crackback, you know, I would probably at least chump one of the two, but it's also tempting to double block here to, for example, kill the Iron Claw Orc. Really interesting moment here for Elon, and it all depends on what he has in hand. It looks like he's going to go for a double block here on the Iron Claw Orc, I assume, because he cannot kill the Scavenger Folk unless he's got some kind of pump spell yeah, on the Iron Claw Orc. So that means I'm at least getting my Soul Ring back for what it's worth. And he's going to take uh, two points of damage. We will drop to four. Or not. Is he changing his mind here? No, I don't think. Okay, so Soaring is coming back. It's going to take two. It's going to drop to four. Passing the turn here, untapping, of course, the sprites in the lands and not the preacher. So it's really nice to see in this whole tournament how often I've actually used the Concordant Crossroads. It's also great to get rid of another Enchant World on the side of your opponent like the Abyss. Uh, but it's also really useful to kind of use it with, you know, dropping a creature and the Crossroads so that you can attack straight away. That has really been a useful, uh, useful tool for me in this uh, tournament so far. Elon on four, I'm on seven. And I mean, this is tough. Look at that Elon not attacking anymore. You know, he could attack me, put me on six, go up on five, but then I attack him back with these scavenger folk. And I would, uh, you know, put him on three. So he would, he would basically lose a life every turn with that exchange. Okay, there's a maze of if. That is interesting. The problem here really is that preacher. I have to take care of that preacher. It's nice to have the maze against an attack, but... Oh, there's a fireball. Oh, he's winning this one. Oh, man, look at that. There's a Saran Nip on top. And yeah, you saw me clapping there. Uh, I have to respect this, Elon. Well, well played. I, ca I can't believe you won this first game. I was I was ahead. Like, it was going so good until that an Inferno hit. And, but also that Divine Offering moment on the IC. Brilliant, my man. Uh, you've deserved this first game win and I guess I'm with the back against uh, the wall here need to win game number two or I am out of this tournament which is something I hope is not going to happen so please pray with me as we go into game number dos game number two here we go so I'm on the play fighting for my tournament life here starting with the mountain passing the turn no one drop for me and I wow that game one man I'm still Ooh, that fireball at the end. Anyway, Elon starting with a forest passing to turn. Tapping the forest here. Okay, there's a Thalid. I guess I got that from the top of the deck or else it would have been my turn one play. So Thalid, a 1-1. One, one. And every uh, upkeep, you get to put a counter on it. When you've got three counters, you can remove them and get a 1-1 one, one Suprolink creature. So it's nice. You know, it's a 1-1 one, one body and it does something positive. So I'm happy with that for one mana. There is, okay, the Argovian Pixie, so 2-1, protection from, art, well, not protection from artifacts, but all damage dealt to it by artifacts is reduced to zero, and it cannot be blocked by artifacts. So one counter on the Thalet, going to tap two. Oh, there is a uh, Dwarven Catapult, so that's going to kill the uh, Argovian Pixies. Always nice to see your opponent looking up the card, you know, that makes me happy. Card from uh, Fallen Empires, it's kind of the fireball of Fallen Empires. And uh, the amount of damage, so it's one red and X, and the amount of damage you put into it, like let's say it's two damage, it divides it equally over the creatures of your opponent. So if you would put, um, if, if Elon would have two creatures, it would deal a half of a damage to each of the creatures, and it's um, rounded down, so it would actually deal zero damage. But in this case, it's ideal. It takes care of the Argovian Pixies, and I'm swinging in here with the Thalet, so putting Elon here on 19, untapping it again after damage has been dealt with the Mace of If. Because why not? 
You know, <laughs> if you can do it, do it. I love to do that, by the way, when I play with Timmy Spellbook attack with my Protocol Sorcerer, untap it, and then ping as well at the end step of my opponent the next turn. It's, it's kind of funny. Sometimes that scenario happens, you know, when your opponent doesn't have anything on the board. Anyway, in a land from Elon and a pass. Now, we saw, of course, in game one that his deck tends to be a little bit slower than my list. But, I mean, once it gets going, he's got a lot more powerful top decks. So I have to make sure that I can kind of put pressure on. And right now, I'm doing a pretty bad job not playing another land, just passing the turn. I am going to get a 1-1 creature next turn. That's pretty sweet. Okay, there's a book by Elon. I mean, this is... He's going to gain a lot of value here. At least I can make a creature now. A 1-1 one, one Soproling. Anyway, first playing a forest. So I guess I found a land from the top of my deck. Let's hope that I can do something with it. I really need to start putting some more pressure on the board. Okay, there's a Thalonite Druid. So this is a 1-1 one, one Druid. And um, for one green and one, I can then uh, sacrifice a creature. And then all my forests turn into two, three creatures. So not very relevant at the moment it is of course a nice syn synergy with the thalit because the thalit makes the prolings i can then sack the soproling to the druid and then make an army of forests very flavorful but first i'm going to attack elon put him on 17 passing the turn now one of the problems here for me is that that druid is also just a one one you know so if elon which is a pretty big if if he doesn't play any, any creatures out i can start dealing three points of damage next turn but it's a pretty big if i mean he's got five mana right Let's see what he can do. And if there's nothing that he can do, then he can also start drawing cards in my end step, which is not great. Tapping five here. Okay, wow, look at that. That's an Earth Elemental 4-5 powerhouse. End step taking off the counters to create a 1-1 one, one here. So a little 1-1 one, one Soproling. These are the, uh, for the old school lovers out there, these are uh, the original tokens, cardboard tokens. And uh, yeah, man, this is tough. What to do here? I mean, one of the things I can do is swing in with everything. Then the creature that he blocks, take it out of combat with the Maze of If. But um, yeah, it's not great here, the situation that I'm in. Tapping four. What am I going to do for four? I mean, what I really need is a land and a detonate to get rid of the gem they told and deal four damage in the process. Okay, this is actually quite good. This is really nice. If Biff a free to 3-3 three, three flyer. So it flies over the Earth Elemental. And uh, it also has a built-in hurricane mechanic. The problem though here is that Elon can also kill it himself because everybody can activate that hurricane mechanic. It's a pretty unique card. So for each green that you pay, and Elon can do that as well. Each flying creature takes a damage. Each player takes a damage. So Elon can simply pay three mana here. To kill the if biff probably my reasoning here is you know what at least i'm going to deal three damage to him and i mean he's got the book so he's got the advantage if he wants to to kill it he's got to pay three meaning he doesn't have enough mana to uh draw a card and he takes some damage right and i have to, i am the aggressor in this matchup remember i'm already a game down playing for my life here i gotta take risks i gotta do it man i gotta do it Anyway, Elon, a little bit in the tank here to think, okay, do I want to kill this if biff? I, I think this is a good decision. Like, he kind of has to, you know. If he lets it fly around, then next turn I'm definitely going to deal three damage to him anyway. Flying over the Earth Elemental and probably some more. There's the past turn, so not attacking with the Earth Elemental. And let's see what I can do. Tapping three. Okay, Dwarven Warriors, not too bad. I mean, is it great? No, but it's it's not the worst. 1-1 one, one creature, you can tap it to give target creature with power 2 or less uh, unblockable. So that is a way to kind of sneak past that uh, huge Earth Elemental here. But I mean, the problem is that, you know, the creatures that I play are all like little 1-1s one, or 2-2s, two, you know, cute stuff. And the things that Elon casts really make a difference. So... I, I got to be honest here with myself. I'm in a really bad shape. Okay, here we see an Aladdin. That is not too bad for me because I simply don't have any artifacts yet. And now that I know that he's got the Aladdin out, I'm not going to play out any important artifacts, right? I don't want to play into that. So I actually think, again, looking back at things, it's easy. I think a better player for Elon was probably just simply to pass the turn and step use the Gem de Tome. Oh, here we see a detonate on that same Gem de Tome. Wow, and this feels so good. And the reason it feels so good is that I'm dealing four damage to Elon 
and I'm taking care of one of the best artifacts in his deck. You know, this is what you want to do in life. This is what you want to do with a detonate. Making my Soproli here unblockable by my Dwarven Warrior, another thing you want to do in life. Dealing a damage. I, I kind of feel that flavor-wise, all these Soprolings and Thalats should have had Force Walk because basically they're, they are fungus that comes from the trees. Anyway, just my opinion, my two cents. Do with it as you wish. So, uh, passing the turn here to Elon. And again, look at my Thalate. It's got three counters on it. So I can take uh, take that off in his end step. And I can make another 1-1 one, one Suproling. I mean, it's super slow, I know. But I am slowly getting there. The problem is, of course, and we saw Elon do this in uh, in game one. As soon as Elon manages to stabilize, I am, uh, yeah, in a pretty bad situation. Look, talking about bad situation, you could strip the mace here. But he's not tapping six. Oh, Shiva Dragon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my hopes and dreams are crushed. Oh, my lord. A Shivan Dragon. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, at least I got the mace. But he can he can destroy the mace next turn with the strip. This is so bad. Oh, am I going to get kicked out of the tournament here, ladies and gentlemen? It sure looks like it. Oh, God. This is so bad. This is so bad. Okay, I'm on 17. Maybe I got like... A Two more turns, maybe. Am I being optimistic? Oh, God. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Remember, I'm a game down. And to be honest, in game one, it was looking a lot better for me. And I lost that one. And it's looking now. Okay, there's a Wailuli Wolf. Yeah, more small stuff. Of course, love it. Oh, man. So making the Sproling unblockable, I guess I'm making the Thalit unblockable. Sure, why not? Let the Thalit swing in for a change, putting Elon on eight. Oh, man, this is bad. This is really bad. Is there a way out of this for me here? I'm thinking, you know, maybe if Elon like swings in fully and I survive, then somehow I can just deal a lot of damage to him. I mean, he is on eight, which is pretty low. I've got the Thalonite Druid, right? So Thalonite Druid, remember, uh, one green and one, tap, sacrifice a creature, and then all my forests become two threes. So then I would get three two three creatures that can attack. I mean, it's going to be tough, but maybe. Let's first see what Elon's going to do this turn. I mean, maybe he's got another creature to the bo to put onto the board. That would be pretty bad. He can also just strip the maze and just attack with just a Sheevan. I mean, it's it's. Oh man! Even if I, for example, would draw into a fireball or a disintegrate, I don't have enough mana to kill the Sheevan or to kill Elon. Although, probably, let's see, if I would draw a fireball, I could deal four damage to Elon, put him on four, and then probably an all out attack would get me there. Anyway, he's stripping away now my maze of if. Oh, man. I'm still on 17, at least. That's something. That Shivan is looking so scary. So, so, so scary. I mean, I'm sure he's going to swing in with the Shivan. I've got nothing to block it with, right? The question is will he also swing in with the Earth Elemental? I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. If he does, let's let's assume he's going to swing in with the Sheevan. Then he only has two blockers left. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six creatures. But then, of course, I'm going to tap the Thalonite. Sack one of my creatures. So now I've got four creatures plus three forests to attack with. Which are two threes. So... That's a lot of damage on board, actually. That's six points of damage on board. I can make a forced unblockable or attack with the dwarf. You know what? I'll try to do the calculating uh, when it's my turn. Let's first just see what Elon's going to do. So we know that he, you know, stripped my maze here. Which probably shows that he wants to attack with the Sheevan. And he could attack it with the Sheevan, pump it up to eight, deal eight points of damage, put me on nine. And I think Elon is, is probably doing the same math as that I'm doing right now. He's thinking, okay, if you attack with the Sheevan, can I kill you on the crackback? That is the big question here. And that's my only way to still win this. 
Remember, if I lose this game, I'm out of the tournament. It's over. There are no second chances here. Already a game behind. What is he going to do? I mean, he's got Earth Elemental Eladin and Eladin then as blockers, and he's probably going to block two forests. And I'm now thinking again on when it's my turn. So he's probably going to block two forests. He's going to take two from a two, three forest. I mean, then he survives. He only takes six points of damage. He would be on two, I believe. Let's see. Tapping four. What is he going to do for four? Oh, there's a Gauntlet of Might. Wow. So that means all his red creatures gain plus one, plus one. Actually, also my uh, Dwarf gets plus one, plus one. So all red creatures. And all mountains tap for an extra red. So now he can make the Shivan into a nine. He can burn me down to, uh, to nine life from 17 to nine. Is he going to do that? There he goes. There the Shivan goes. Yeah, I'm probably going to pump it up here. Yep. Going to deal nine points of damage. So he's going to put me on eight, right? I was on 17. No, of course, on, uh, yeah, on eight. I believe I should be on eight. But the interesting thing, though, is that my Dwarven Warriors is a 2-2. Two -two. That actually matters. If I have another forest in my hand, I could drop forest. Oh, let's see what I can do. This is, this is nerve-wracking stuff. This is calculating stuff. I know if I don't kill Elon now, I'm dead. It's quite simple. You know, that part, of, that part is really simple. Okay, so look at that. So I'm putting my Thalonite Druid on the side. So I'm probably going to use the Druid. I can sack the Druid itself, actually. I can sack the Druid to itself, turn all the creatures into 2-3s, attack with everything. He's probably going to uh, block my, you know, two of my forests, but my Dwarven Warriors is now a 2-2 two -two because of the Gauntlet of Might. So I can deal 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points of damage. He's on 8. I think I can win this here. I think I can win this. Look at me calculating. So I want to be absolutely sure. Elon completely tapped out. Look at me doing it here using the Thelonite Druid. I can sack it to itself. Oh, am I going to win this? Oh, ho, 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 I think I am. I think I'm explaining it now here to my opponent. Putting everything, turning everything sideways. Alpha Strike. Go, forests. Go. Go, people of the woods. Go, Soprolings. Go, Thalit. Go, my wolf boy! And this is amazing. Because of the Gauntlet of Might that Elon has played out, I'm winning this game number two. That means it is now a 1 1. Wow. That is amazing. Oh, yeah. Counting it up now, it's eight points of damage. Exactly. This is why I love magic so much. These weird situations. Winning game number two. And that means we're going to go to game number three. What a thriller, thriller, thriller of a match. Amazing stuff. We're just, uh, whew. we're going to shuffle up and uh, we will catch back up with you in game number three. Who is going to advance to the quarterfinals? We will find out in the next game. Game number three, one, one. Wow, Elon being on the play. So that's that's a bit of an advantage for him. But look at this. He is taking a mulligan, though. That is not great for him. He's going to go down to six. I'm still on seven. Let's see what he can do at turn one. So whoever wins this game is going to advance to the quarterfinals of the uh, Timmy Talks Highlander 93-94 Online Championships. Playing a Pendlehaven here into a Gazman Ogre. Okay, a 2-2 creature from Arabian Nights. And during your upkeep, it goes to the player with the most life. So it's not very loyal. So if Elon here has a lightning bolt, that would be legendary. You know, he could just bolt me down to 17 and take over my Gasman Ochre. But if he doesn't, it's a 2-2. Two -two. You know, 2-2 two -two for one mana. That's pretty good value in my book. And hopefully I can swing in with it next turn. Of course, the Pendlehaven doesn't work on the Ogre, unfortunately, because it's already a 2-2. But uh, let's see what Elon can do. Passing the turn to him now and... 
I mean, his deck, we know now that his deck is quite slower than mine, so hopefully he's unable to play anything out. Okay, there's some rap. That's quite good for him, though. Felwer Stone can make a green because of that Pendlehaven. There is a Taiga. Okay, can we see a Curd Ape? That would be pretty sweet, and I would have two, uh, two powered creatures on board. Tapping two here. What are we going to see? Also playing a Felwer Stone. Attacking with the Gas Ban, putting him on 18. It looks like no more creature threats for me, though. Just passing the turn. That is not really happy with that. You know, my deck wants to play a creature out every uh, every single turn. That's what it was built for. That's why there are so many smaller creatures in the deck. And, of course, those creatures are quite good early game and get really bad the longer the game takes. Elon doing nothing here. Okay, this is great news for me. Not even playing out a land, so he's kind of stuck there. Five cards in hand. Remember, he's playing a three-color deck. Green, red, and white. So cannot play his white spells at the moment. Tapping two here. Untapping again, okay. Attacking first, that makes sense, you know. Let's do that, let's do the difficult stuff in the, in the second main. <laughs> okay, playing a forest. I have got four mana now, quite a lot. Okay, playing a shatter on the Felwer Stone, realizing that Elon has mana problems. Kind of attacking the mana base here and playing the Wailuli Wolf. I think this Shatter is a good play when you see it, your opponent is stuck on lands. And of course, with the Felwer, he could still make a green source. So now his green mana are gone as well. He is fine. He did find a, a plateau from the top, meaning he now has access to white again. But I mean, we know his deck is slow and pretty mana hungry in general. I mean, he's got some lower casting cost creatures, but I think his deck really wants to have a lot of... Uh, of Lance, so I think it was a good decision here to take care of the Felwer. Attacking here with both. Of course, I can also use the Pendlehaven. Not using the Pendlehaven, playing out a giant spider instead. Look at Elon's life total. He's already on 13, so now things are starting to move very quickly. And I think if you're Elon, you really need to have exactly a land drop and a creature. Not the Jam Day Tome. Very good card, but not what you're looking for in this situation. I mean, we've got at least six more points of damage incoming. Another creature hitting the board, the Thalet. That's There's that 1-1 one, one again that did uh, a great job for me in uh, in game number two. Tapping the Taiga. What are we going to see? There's a Concordant Crossroads, meaning I can attack with the Thalet as well. So just an extra point of damage to put there into the red zone. Using the Pendle Heaven, that means two, four, six, seven points of damage. Elon's going to drop to six here, being on 13. Ooh, this is so bad for Elon. He only has one last turn. I think he needs something like an Earthquake. A land and an Earthquake would kill all my creatures. You know, he's got the land, the Hammerheim. If he's got the Earthquake, it'll put him on two. But, I mean, it'll kill all my creatures. Oh, this is pretty good. So, this is, um, oh, what's the card called again? Pyrotechnics or Pyrokinesis? I always mix those up. I think Pyrotechnic, so he can deal four points of damage, divide that any way he wants to. And this is really good, you know, killing three creatures here with one card, that's amazing. You know, White Lily Wolf, Gasman Ochre, Thalit are all now in the graveyard. They've got a lovely Tombstone. Tombstone, how do you pronounce that? Anyway, you know what I mean. Tapping here, tapping for Juggernaut. Oh, Jugger for the win. Jugger for the win. Amazing. Man, I'm happy with this. Juggernaut for the win. Remember, because of that Concordant Crossroads, the Juggernaut did the work. Also had a Chain Lightning there in the, in the hand, in my hands as well. That, that was a great card also. But this Juggernaut, amazing. Amazing, you know. I am, I am super happy here. You can see me cheer. Oh, what a game. What a game. What a match. Elon, thank you so much. This every single game was amazing here you know even game one where i lost to that top deck it was amazing you know thank you so much i'm starting to sound so american now with the amazing amazing but it really i really feel looking back at this i'm just it's amazing you know i'm so happy and of course i am going to the quarterfinals oh wow i really just i need a moment you know um it's really so, so sweet to to look back at these games i've just enjoyed them so much and the good news is the train isn't ending. We're still on our journey uh, to try to get as far as we can in the uh, Highlander championships here. So 
going on to the quarterfinals while we look at the beautiful deck of Elon, by the way, man. It was uh, it was such a pleasure to play against you. And of course, also thank you for your support as a patron of the show. Um, next week, you can see me battle with Yoon Erik. And here is the deck of Yoon Erik. So, I mean, it's a completely different story. It's a completely different match. I've played blue-red before, of course, in the group stages where I was quite lucky. But this blue-red deck looks... Uh, very fierce, very dangerous. So yeah, I have to play Yoon Erik here. And I think I'm once again going to be more of the aggressor. But uh, yeah, it is risky. Again, a deck that also has red in it. I think we can conclude that that's definitely one of the strongest colors in this uh, in this Highlander format. So yeah, going to battle Yoon Erik in the quarterfinals. If you don't want to miss that, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and if you're already a sub, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching my videos. That is so, so appreciated. Please leave a like, share this on your socials if you want to, and leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. You basically are telling YouTube that you like my stuff, you know, so that's great. Another thing that you can do is become a patron of the show. So I've talked about it in the introduction, but here I'm going to talk about it again at the end of the video. Uh, when you check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, you can find out how you can become a sponsor of the show. It already starts with just $1 a month. So just a little bit of money that really helps me as a content creator. So please consider becoming a patron. Uh, please check out uh, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. That is the right URL. Um, so if you would go there, I would really, really appreciate it. Please consider becoming a patron. And uh, what do you get back when you become a patron? Actually, quite a lot. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord at a certain tier level. We can also play a game together. At another tier level, we can even make an episode together. So if you'd like to see yourself on Timmy Talks, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can do that. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. What end scroll? This end scroll. Zeke!